welcome to Furious Driving. And it's a very, very special edition of Junk in the Trunk for two reasons. First of all, it's raining at last. It's been 30 plus degrees all week and it's been unpleasant. My teeth are melting and it's actually a thunderstorm now, so it's borderline not boiling hot. Secondly, possibly more importantly, this weekend we hit, I hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel. So I want to say a massive, massive thank you to every single person who hit that subscribe button over the last, well, two, three years since Furious Driving kind of began in earnest and really started becoming the focus of my life for the last couple of years. So this is a big milestone for the channel and it wouldn't have been possible to keep this stuff going without the input and everything I've had from everyone who's been sending stuff in in the post for junk in the trunk, for the comments you've left on the videos, for the emails, the messages on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, everything else that people have sent. So thank you everybody for being part of the Furious Driving community and making it the special happy car place that it is. So brilliant. Secondly, junk in the trunk news. Over the last couple of months I've been doing this, I said it's about Christmas time I think, so nearly half a year. And it's a up and down fluctuation. I, no I noticed that Hubnut has decided to stop doing his mailbag slot um, uh, just this month in fact. And I've noticed also I've not had quite as much stuff coming in. I thankfully haven't been cursed with the the joy of the wish packages, which I think is perhaps why he stopped is because it was kind of getting away from the point of, of what he was doing. I have only had really interesting, exciting, fun stuff, which has been really useful and really good to receive. So thanks to everyone who's been sending that in. I've not been getting the same volume of it since uh, we kind of started getting back to normal, if that makes sense in the real world. Um, so perhaps rather than doing it as every month as I have been, I'll do it more um, as I get enough stuff to do to warrant an episode, I'll do it then. I'm also thinking of starting a sub channel purely for that because I noticed, I spent a lot of time on the analytics of this channel and something I've noticed is that whenever I do a junk in the trunk or a um, Q&A type video, I get as many unsubscribes as I do subscribes. So people dislike it and like it and a lot of dislikes because I think if you hit the dislike, it tells YouTube that you don't want to see this kind of content, even if you want to still see other things from that creator. So I might start a sub channel to put the junk in the trunk onto. I don't know, it's, it's pretty much pie in the sky, but do keep sending stuff in, PO Box 477, Aylesford, ME something, I'll read off a box in a second, um, because I don't want to keep this feature going because I enjoy it. I think a lot of you guys enjoy it and there's generally some interesting things to turn up. We will keep going. That is the announcement with that. Secondly, I want to apologize for not putting enough tinkering videos out over the last week. I have been filming as many car reviews as I possibly can while the weather has been good, which means I've not been here to, to work on the cars. I've done over 1500 miles in the last five days driving to, to video shoots. So I've got some really good ones which I'm gonna try and hold on to perhaps until the winter time as well as the stuff I'm still filming. I actually filmed my 50,000 subscriber video yesterday which was after the 50,000 thing happened. So now that's just gonna be an interesting car review video in a couple of weeks time because I kind of missed the boat with it. I, I mistimed it, I'm sorry, I, I got it wrong. Anyway, without further ado, which I think is a thing we have to say on the internet, let's open some boxes. <clears throat> now, first of all, there we go. I can now tell you what my own address is. Furious Driving, PO Box 477, Aylesford, Kent, Mike Echo 699 Lima Echo. That is the address to send things for junk in the trunk. Um, I will keep this on going, as I say, just maybe not every single month because if I don't get enough things to make a full episode, I'll just roll it over until the following month when we have got more of an interesting episode. Now this, I'm going to take a punt and suggest is going to be number plates because I am trying to make the number plate wall. I have got enough to make a second run now, but I can't move the car at the moment. So I need to kind of uh, move the rover a little bit so that I can actually get some more space in the wall. Aha, British plates. I, I, no, Northern Ireland plates, sorry. CKZ7632. Aha. That I believe is Northern Ireland. If there's a letter in here, I may well be proven wrong. This is tightly bound. Oh. They're me. NJZ, ah, okay, so, yeah, I'm, I'm like 90% sure these are NI plates with a Z in the middle. Is there a letter in here? I do hope so. I'd like to know who, who people are who've sent things in. That keeps it interesting in life. May I know who you are then? Wow, can you hear the rain now? That is oh, such a relief, actually. Right, here we are, a letter. Okay, from Sean Cookin. County Derry, Northern Ireland. I was right. 
Let's head to give it away. Dear Matt, over here, the registrations are relatively simple. We have our reg for the first and second cities, Belfast and Derry slash Londonderry. Then each of the six counties has its own reg. All regs comprised of a three letter prefix, there's in J, N, Z here, and followed by a number from one to nine, 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 nine. On the 10,000th reg, the first letter moves from A to B and they're back at number one again. They also have Q, N, I or Q, N, one plates, which are the same as Q plates in the UK for re-registered cars. Okay, so CKZ, this one is from a 1999 Volvo V70 TDI. It's also been transferred over to uh, Audi 2.5 litre turbo diesel, 140 bhp, with five speed manual. Oh, that sounds like a good car. So uh, that Audi, by the sound of it, was bought in 2007 with 105,000 miles, which would put some people off in the first place, but it soldiered on for another eight years to 240,000 miles. So uh, I'm gonna say that did well. So Sean, thank you, that is brilliant. That will join the wall of plates as soon as I can move the Rover out of the way to actually make some more, or actually get over to the wall and drill stuff into it. Those plates will be joining the wall of fame. What else is in the trunk? Right. Now these all, oops, arrived and the postman actually said I'd not been in for a few days and they're about to send them all back. Yeah, I did actually have to pay some a collection fee on it, that's why they nearly sent them back. These are, oh hello. Ah, that one's Jaguar, but the rest are, ah, Mercedes Owners Club. I've never actually joined the Mercedes Owners Club. I have got a really nice Mercedes Owners Club bag I picked up at the uh, NEC a couple of years ago. And I keep that in the car. It's, it's very nice when you wander into Sainsbury's and you've got your Mercedes Owners Club bag on your shoulder. Ah, I'm going to assume these are more of the same. I have read a few of these Mercedes Gazettes in the past and they're generally very interesting and properly written like a real magazine. So if you've got an interest in Mercedes's and Mercedes I, then uh, yes, more Mercedes Gazette 2014. Oh, even more. Uh, interesting Merc 300 SEL 6.3 project. I'll be reading up on later then, that's kind of cool. Wow, <laughs> a lot of unwrapping going on. This is when you need an assistant off camera passing you things. Oh my word, hang on. I'll quickly film on the, my phone a cutaway of the rain as it is now. Oh God, it's all coming in now. Oh God, it's all coming in now. Oh my word, that rain is incredible. I've just quickly had to move a bunch of stuff from the front because it was getting wet with the water blowing in. Well, thank you, I, I didn't see a note in any of those bags. So I don't know who sent those in. There's no return address and no name, so thank you whoever you are. I don't know who to thank, but thank you. Now we'll quickly take a non-boot moment and say, oh God, that rain is actually soaking the welder. It's coming so far in the garage. Okay, the water was actually flowing several meters inside the garage. It's actually not as bad as it was a moment ago. Most dramatic junk in the trunk I've ever done. Right, so I don't know if you can hear me over the sound of the rain now, but the run from the front of the garage to the house and back, I've basically gone from borderline sunburn when I walked in here to having fallen in a river. I don't know if you can see my, my shorts are actually completely sodden. I may as well have stood up in the shower, fully clothed. What I was about to say before I had to go and rescue everything from the front of the garage, so the welder was about to die, is that on a few junk in the trunks ago, I got sent a couple of these really, really nice Rover uh, CD head units. One of them is currently in Quentin the Rover. It might get moved and put into my coupe before it gets sold. Um, the other one though had lost its face. However, someone on the uh, owners club, uh, the Rover 200 group on Facebook was after one of these radios yesterday. So I have uh, agreed to post this out to him. So I mean, that's gonna go in the post this afternoon and hopefully he can utilize this to to get his own one working. So some good has gone all full circle. It's come to me, I'm now moving on to someone who can use it, hopefully for good, not evil. 
And what else do we have in here? It's not a huge trunk fest this week. We have now got another thing to furious driving 4R77L with ME69LE. This is many small items. Let's have a look what we got here. Ooh. A note, first of all, a letter. Dear Mr. Furious, some items that might be of use to you. Being a former Alpha Volvo and Mini owner, God, that's a hell of a coincidence. Uh, these were sat feeling lonely and needed a new home. Spot plugs are for the Mini, well, that's good. Thanks for all the awesome vids, regards, Kenneth. Oh, well, thank you, Russian D, Kenneth. Well, let's see what we've got. So, we've got some Mini spark plugs. I'll have to write Mini on these so I don't forget what they're for. Otherwise, I will. I'm going to write right now, in fact. <coughs> I do have a couple of service items already for the Mini because I've over bought too many oil filters for it last year for some reason. That is very handy indeed. Aha! A Belkin cassette adapter. Fantastic. Ideal for those of us who still have cars with tape decks and want to plug in your phone and play a bit more audible or newer music than tape. That is such a handy thing to have. That would be very handy in the Rover Coupe actually. Oh man, for doing some high speed Volvo street racing, the uh, seatbelt harness pads, so I could, when I'm doing full on G-force cornering and so forth in the 740, that would look quite cool actually. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. Oh, the rain's easing off. God, that was deafening. Oh, that is awesome. A Volvo lanyard. How good is that? I think it gets soggy off me, so keep your Volvo stuff safe and announce your Volvo-ness, your Volvo affiliation in style. I like that. I won't wear it right now because it'll rustle on the microphone. That is very cool indeed. Where on earth did you, where on earth did you get that from? Ah ha ha ha! This is getting very much into my bellywick. Bailwick, very quiet. A Corgi Mercedes 190. Ha, oh, how cool is that? That is awesome. I even like the colour. I must have a Mercedes 190 one day, I think. I've always thought they were such cool cars. When they were new, I really thought they were just awesome looking vehicles. The wall of cars grows. I'll quickly show you the, the lanyard. That's all very, oops, all very Volvo-ish. Very cool. And of course the uh, carbon fiber effect racing pads. <laughs> awesome. Aha. Now, being a bit of a Land Rover fan from years gone by, how good is that? That could well find its way onto one of the toolboxes or something. Camel Trophy Series. The Camel Land Rovers were so cool, weren't they? Where can, where can I find a home for that? I need somewhere in, in sight. I've got a few stickers I need to find homes for. And last of all, oh, is that last of all? Yes, it is. There is Alfa Romeo key ring. Ah, oh, awesome, check that out. Nicely enameled, just like the badge on the car. Lovely, love that. Alfa Romeo. I need more Alfa Romeos so I can put more things in Alfa Romeo key rings. Yep, it's definitely thundering. Thank you, Kenneth, that is really, really cool. You'll see these things around the garage and the channel in future episodes. What else do we have here? Now, now someone did tell me this was coming. It's a slightly less random than you might imagine. <clears throat> and sorry, I lost the email where you said had it arrived and it hadn't where you said had it arrived and then it did arrive and I couldn't find your email. Not that I'm disorganized. These are Rover 400, 1995 to 1999 electric heated door mirrors. Now admittedly, I don't have one of those cars at this moment, but there's a very real possibility that one of those cars could find its way into my collection at some point in the near or distant future, who knows? But these are, check this out, new old stock, unpainted even, so ready to be painted in the body color of whatever car it is. Um, I think that is then filled or sanded to so get a smooth finish or left black depending on the on the spec of the car wow never been used that is absolutely awesome and there are two of them one for each side i wonder if the 200 and 400 use the same mirrors i need to check that not the um not the wedge ones like the r8 the bubble ones that'd be quite cool if i had a, a bubble one and you could fit heated mirrors to it then i think they might be a bit smaller though hi matt as promised from my email uh mark thank you mark yes I now I've got email, I can actually reply to you. That's a ridiculous number of emails come in. Here are the two new Rover Dormers. Hope they're of use or can make some money for your channel, chosen charity. Keep the videos coming in. Content is ace. Thank you much indeed. Uh, good luck for the future. Regards. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark, indeed. See, yeah. What I will ultimately do if I have too much stuff that I can't either repurpose within the, the Rover or Furious Driving community or use myself, I will have like an, a charity auction of some kind at, at 
at some point and move things on. These are really cool. The weather has definitely broken. The car mirrors look really big when you see them away from a the car. They look quite small when they're actually on a car. But then in isolation, they, they do appear quite large. Look at that, brand new, never used. It's the kind of thing you buy expecting to use and then 10 years later you've sold the car a decade previous and the thing's still in the box. I'm not admitting to doing that myself. It's just implied. Ah, oh, very cool. Thank you, Mark. That is really, really cool. Now, I think this is the last one. It's a fairly, fairly small trunk junk episode this time. I think the last time we ran about an hour. This one will be, I think, a bit shorter. Now, this is another one that's crossed the water from Ireland, but this is from southern rather than northern Ireland, in Cork. Now what have we got? Okay, this says, Hi Matt, hope this arrived in time for the next junk in the trunk. Yes, it was just in time because I was very disorganized and very busy. So yes, I was able to collect it from the office this morning. Another model for the office or man cave. Maybe one day you'll be able to afford a full size one. Come regards, Tony. Thank you, Tony. That is absolutely fantastic. Let's see what we've got lurking in here. It's got an Italian name on the top. It says Ferrari. Ferrari, oh, hello. Oh, Ferrari 488 Spider, inspired by the 166 Touring Barchetta of 1950. What a beautiful model of a beautiful car. 48 series and the 360 series. I do rather like that particular generation. That is a couple of decades of style, more than the current ones actually. The 458, the 488, they are very pretty cars. Look, look at those tail lights, that is such a nice looking thing. Even the headlamps look good on these. Let's see if I can get this out. This is taped in for security. Right, that took a little while to get all the tape off. There's many little bits of tape. So I can actually take this lid off and show you this properly. Blue exterior, tan interior, that is very pretty indeed. Look at that, that is so nice. I can, I can do like a, a glistening product photo thing with the, uh, the light just here. Look at that. Look at that light just catching on that thing. Okay, check out the haunches. What a pretty thing. Look at the shapes. So, so I'm not, I'm not a, um, one of those people who just loves every Ferrari automatically because it's a Ferrari, but certain models just look really good. I remember a few years ago I was doing some work in Italy and we had to do some work at I'll take some photos at the Ferrari factory and they let us out in a 458 on our own for a few hours. Just driving the Italian hills in a 458 was a very, very nice day of work. Beautiful. Thank you so Thank you so much, Tony. That will find a nice home on a shelf, making the office look very good indeed. I'll add one final thing, which didn't come in the post, ouch. But did come but did come from a neighbour who has given a stack, a bootful basically, of Haynes manuals. So I've now finally got a Haynes manual for the Volvo 700 that I can keep in the boot or keep in the garage. Uh, I've actually got about another 20 or so more, 30 in fact, other Haynes manuals, all in the boot of the Alpha, which I was going to show you, but it's raining too hard to go out there now. Uh, all for random cars which I might own in the future. <laughs> I'm not a hoarder. It's useful stuff for the future. Um, so yes, thank you very much indeed to everyone who sent stuff in for Junk in the Trunk this month. As always, it's always fantastic to see all these things turn up and, and to, to share them with you guys. Um, I've just noticed a feature on the front of this uh, Mercedes Gazette uh, Maybach, which is a brand I'm aware of and know a little about, but don't know a great deal. So this is the kind of useful stuff I can refer back to in the future. This is the kind of thing I do love discovering, a bit of history about the company Maybach, for example. But yes, if you have stuff which is interesting or relevant to the channel, or I think you might be interesting for other people watching the channel, because we, I notice the old guys all do talk on the comments. So yeah, it's nice to be able to kind of share the kind of stuff. You can make us laugh, make us interested, uh, help us build the wall of number plates, which is a thing that's going to happen. I'm so hoping to be able to get that barn later in the year, and then I can actually extend the wall of number plates to global proportions. Right, we've only got a couple of comments and questions for the comments and questions section as well, so I'll go and grab the laptop if it's not raining. Right, so I've come back with the laptop. You'll of course notice there are many stickers you can go and buy 
from the links on uh, the Redbubble site, or down to the Redbubble site in the description below. You'll find t-shirts, stickers, mugs, many other items, and notebooks and phone cases, and all sorts, really. So, first question. This has come from only from Patreons and channel members. So if you want to include a question for the next Drunk in the Drunk Q&A, you need to be a channel member or a um, Patreon, and I'll give you the details of the email address you can send questions through to. Right, the first question is from Julian Knight. It says, hi Matt, greetings from Hamburg. If you manage to get a lockup or some other storage for the cars, do you plan to move all of the fleet? And also, will I be attending any festivals or socials? Right, so, first of all, uh, I have kind of got my name as first in line for a barn, but it's gonna be a month or two at least before the current occupier moves out. Um, I think that barn will hold about five cars, so the plan is to still build a lean-to garage, or lean-to here, so I can have the car in the garage here, car in the lockup around the corner, and then two cars so in use at home. So if I can try and keep things up, either projects I need to be at home for, so I need to spend a lot of time on, cars I'm driving at home, and then longer term storage and longer term projects can go and live in the barn. So maybe the W123 with all its welding and brake work, that can go and live on a ramp in the barn. Because um, I'm thinking it's big enough to put a ramp in as well, so I can actually work underneath it. That'd be fantastic. And so yeah, I think if I can split maybe five cars over there, a few cars over here, and that would hopefully see me through. Um, I don't really know exactly how many cars I can get into this unit because I've not been able to go inside yet because there is, I say, still an occupier. So I'm hoping to get in there very soon indeed, and then I can move the cars indoors, have somewhere to work on them in the dry, which would be absolutely fantastic. Second part of the question, am I going to any festivals or events? Uh, yes, I am going to be at the Festival of the Unexceptional. My plan is to take the Volvo, which I think is only about two weeks away now, isn't it? Very soon indeed. Up in Lincolnshire, uh, my plan is to roll up in the Volvo 740 because that's a base model, so therefore unexceptional. Um, I uh, haven't got any other plans for an actual social yet. I need to get my form my finger out and sort that out before the summer is over. But um, there are so many events happening, I, I don't want to clash with other things. I need to just uh, get, get on with that really. But yes, I will do a actual furious driving social at some point very soon indeed. Um, but yes, for the meantime though, if you want to come and say hello, I will be wandering the festival. Next question. This is from Scottish Car Enthusiast TV. Davey, hello. Hi Matt, hope you're well. And we're currently on holiday, so enjoying the wee breakaway. Well, I don't know if you've headed south, but I know at some point later in the year, I will be heading to Scotland for a few days with my own family holiday, so that'll be entertaining, sort of going in opposite directions. My question this month, if you had no choice but to buy an electric car today, what would it be? Now that is a difficult question. There are quite a few that are good, but I would need something with a minimum range of 300 plus miles, a decent sized boot. I think all the electrics tend to be pretty comfortable and pretty well specced, but it's battery life that tends to be the issue. Um, so I'm not really sure what I would go for. In terms of battery life and the distance you can go, probably the best bet is still a Tesla, so I might kind of be forced down that Tesla route, but the build quality on Teslas is not the best, if I'm perfectly honest. They, the door shuts don't line up, the reliability is fairly awful. I do like a Mini, the Mini Electric looks good, but the range isn't very big, and the inside is, what's well, a Mini basically, isn't it? Uh, Hyundai and Kia do some really good ones, something like the, uh, the Kona, that's a nice car. Um, but I think if I had to buy an electric car, money was no object, it would have to be the Porsche Taycan, because that is actually a really, really good looking car, and it's a great handling car as well. And who wouldn't want a Porsche, let's face it. And it's got lots of room inside as well, so it's a good practical vehicle, family car, decent boot, goes like stink, looks good. It's not as engaging as a 911, but, you know, it's, it's the electric future, and if that's the electric future, that's kind of the palatable side of it. If not that, I might have to just sit on my hands and wait for the fully electric Volvo V80, the S80 estate, to arrive, because that would be pretty decent and probably more than big enough. Yeah, difficult question. I'm not really an expert on electric cars, I really ought to be. Next question. Uh, any updates about the Sinclair C5 from Frank Waltheus? Frank, I'm really sorry, no I haven't. I've got what I think are all the bits. I've just been mad busy with work, mad busy shooting videos, getting stuck into the Mercedes, and it's just fallen by the wayside. That's my fault, that's all on me, I'm really sorry. Uh, if it wasn't tipping a rain right now, um, as soon as I finished this video, I was gonna get outside and do some more on it. Because um, I've, I've kind of ventured into the grounds of cutting chunky bits of metal and welding stuff. It's one of those jobs I can't do out in the driveway after sort of tea time because that's just rude to the neighbors. So uh, it's, it's a daytime only job now until I've done all the fabrication of brackets going into the sides 
of the thing. But yeah, that is very near to doing. I, I was thinking about it this very morning, thinking I really let that one slide. I need to crack on with that. But I just have so much stuff going on right now. It's just a ridiculous summer. But yes, very soon the C5 will be back. Okay, this might actually be the last question. I can't believe it. This is a really short junk in the trunk and Q&A. This is from William, William Hughes. Hello. Hi, Matt. Hope you're well and the Merc isn't kicking your ass too much. Well, you know, I'm getting through it. It doesn't look too bad. I think I'm, I'm breaking the back of it. Question for Q&A. If SAIC were to bring back the Rover Mark to the UK, where do you think they'll be positioned in the market? Who would they be competing with? That is a really interesting question. Um, because they would have to position it as like a sort of upmarket car going, they would want to be competing a bit with Jaguar, that kind of level of quality, that kind of that aura of car. But at the same time, they wouldn't be able to charge that kind of money. So they'd wind up being competing with the bottom end of BMW, maybe trying to cut in a bit above Ford, certainly taking on things like Peugeot, maybe even Alfa Romeo. They'd be looking at trying to do a luxury saloon, but obviously it'd be an SUV these days because everything's an SUV, unfortunately. But yeah, I would love it if they did bring back the Rover name. That'd be such a cool thing to have that brand, that wonderfully iconic British band back on the market again. So I can go and buy a new 75, a new 2000 even. Um, I can't see it happening because of the way that the old brands have been slightly devalued. It wouldn't be able to compete as it used to do with things like um, BMW and Mercedes. It's an interesting place. It would be further down market these days, unfortunately, but it would be a luxury luxurious brand. Think of like the, the DS spin-off from Citroen, it'd be that kind of thing. Right, I think that is the last of the questions for this month. So if you've got any more questions and you're a Patreon or a channel member, then do please whack it over to the address that you will have uh, available to you. I'll, I'll remind you later on on other channels. Uh, if you've got any more stuff for junk in the trunk, then do please send it over, whack it over to the PO Box address. And as soon as we've got enough for another episode, I will uh, reveal all and we'll have some more fun looking at stuff from the junk in the back of the rover which i also must need to get on with as well because let's face it this one he's doing as well too many projects not enough time oh well thank you for watching please don't unsubscribe <laughs> i'll see you again next time take care everybody